everybody. It is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa. Me moving my paint tray out of the way. Actually, John will probably crop that out. So today I'm going to be showing you step by step how you can create an acrylic paint on canvas this cute, adorable baby turtle. Now I have been informed that turtles are aquatic and tortoises are for land, but we're going to be very general just for the, I don't know, purposes of the algorithm. <laughs> right? So, but we know. Right, like we know, but we're going to say turtle, but we know tortoise. Does that make sense? Uh, sure. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi. And I asked if he agrees with me. He's going to be making sure that as I explain a technique, a color mix, or a tool, that the camera is pointing at what I'm talking about so you can see it, and that way you can paint along at home. There is more information in the description. Uh, so if you need more information on materials, uh, links to our website, and... Um, Access to the traceables, all those resources, you will be able to get that, no problem. We're going to let John find that little second to set himself, and we'll begin. Uh, oh, we'll just do this. <sighs> Woohoo! Getting it all worked out. There there we go. We go. So we like to make sure that you guys can see the palette, and you can see a picture in picture, and that you can see the canvas. On top of that, there's a traceable. Um, and if you came over from the Facebook event, welcome. It's so nice to have you here. Don't forget to like, thumbs up that video, and subscribe to the channel so that you can get notifications. And for those of you that came from a text notification, if you saw your picture notification in text today, let me know if you did and how you liked it. Are you ready to throw up a step, John? Ooh, we're to jump in. All right, step one. So I'm on an eight by eight surface and this particular painting is dedicated to Oliver um, and Oliver's family that just every good and supportive thing that can happen for them does happen for them. We're just all about that around here. So, hey guys, we just want everything to be going as good as it can for y'all. Um, today's cat colors are cad red, cad yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, Mars black, uh, and this is ultramarine blue, titanium white. And step one is just painting this whole surface a solid color. So that's very low pressure on all of us, right? Solid color. Yeah, so we're going to create a ground. We're going to create a sans kind of color background. So I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre here and a little of my burnt sienna kind of together. So how hmm. solid is, like sometimes when you say solid background, it's like it's it can still, be streaky. It can be streaky. This is just that first sort of uh kind of layer of color and i'm gonna just paint it across it could be multi-directional though it doesn't have to be across like this and i'm sort of mixing the yellow ochre about one to one with the burnt sienna. and i'm just making a darker brown i will lighten this but the thing is is like trying to make sure that there's enough value between the light egg and the background is going to be really important because sometimes photography can do things you know, in a way that's easier than we can do as artists. And sometimes as artists, we can do things photography can't do. So this is, so would you say this is an ode to a background? This right now is an acrylic color ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thought. So it's, it is the beginning of a background, if that makes sense. But what it also does is it's going to let us sketch in the turtle on the next step, figure out, you know, what we're painting, because we don't want to have to paint all the background if we don't need... All the background, right? I remember you also saying that it makes it easier for the paint to stick consistently. It does. It really helps the paint stick consistently. Um, you know, sometimes the canvases can be almost like resistant to the paint. Like they're like, no, I dream to do other things with my life. And then you're like, no, you will take this paint. So this will make it much easier for a beginner to start painting, huh? It really does help new artists. And it, it helps experienced artists like an acrylic ground goes a long way because a lot of our paints can be transparent, but not in the same way that oils are. And this is just a great workaround for that. Now, for this to work, though, we really, really, really need to dry it with a hair dryer. So John will talk to you for a second while he's drying it with a hair dryer. I am. General reminder, if you're here and you like what you see, hit that thumbs up. And for sure, if you've got something else you'd like to paint, leave a comment after the show and let me know the kinds of things you're interested in painting. I'm going to dry this right now. Okay. Hello, everybody. It's good to see you guys. Such a nice, wonderful crew of folks out here today. I see all the peoples. I'm also going to go ahead and do the little chat pop out. Thank you guys for coming over and joining us from this side. We really appreciate it. You know, we've been having some trouble with our Facebook streaming, so we may split those up. So come on over here. Join us on Facebook. Uh, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Do the YouTube things. Click down below, and you're going to find... In the description below, hidden 
a whole bunch of free stuff. This is the free stuff. There's going to be free traceable, a free mini book, a free reference place to our website where we have all these materials and llamas. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't know why I grabbed I that. Now, if you go up, Sandy said this was her first live. She's been painting with us for a year. Hi, Sandy. They've been painting with us for a year and they're super excited to be here. And we're so, if this is your first live, like throw up a hand or something, um, sometimes it, you know, you never know when somebody's schedule is free and they get to join us for a live. And it's always really fun to meet new people in our community. Hello, now, new people. I'm going to do some sketching in chalk and then I'm going to come wait, in wait, and wait, paint. Wait, 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 wait. So you can see it. You got to step me. I know. I got to give you this. Steppy, steppy, Shoo. step. Steppy, steppy, step. Okay, nice. Steppy, steppy, step. All right. What's that thing you've got in your hand? I have a Dritz chalk tool. This is just chalk in a cool candy contraption that I can kind of click out like a mechanical pencil. It's a tailor's tool. It's tailor's chalk. You can get it at Joann's. You should not spend more than $13 on it, period. Um, and, they, and I guess I don't know with inflation anymore. But it shouldn't be that expensive if it is just switch to chalk and sharpen it with a jumbo sharpener. The first thing I'm going to want to do is kind of sketch in the amount of space just generally that I feel the egg is going to take up, right? So I know I need a little bit of space under the egg, at the top of the egg, and at both sides. I tried to kind of kind of crop this image in to leave that sort of really focused bit. Now, of course, it's not going to be perfectly round like what we have here, um, and that's just because it doesn't need to be. Right? And then we're going to have rocks and everything down below, but we really don't put these these rocks in till later we can put the background in fairly right away now let me see if I can sketch this out the other thing that I'm going to want to do is kind of think about up here I've got kind of a broken little shell I know I have that going on right and then we've got a little head I'm just going to give myself some chalk lines and then I'll sketch it in with paint so that when we're sketching in you're using a traceable if you don't draw if you don't draw and draw makes drawing makes you miserable Use the traceable. If you've never used a traceable before, we have written up instructions and we have a video for it. So we don't expect you to even know how to use a traceable. You can do it. And I'm going to take long enough that you could probably print it out and get some transfer paper and do it. But right now I'm going about the size of uh, a silver dollar, which is relative if you live where I live. But it's maybe bigger than a Coke bottle lid. You know, just kind of in there, just taking up the face. And I know that I've got to have room for the neck to be coming out. We've got a little foot happening here. Fabulous little foot. So I definitely want to pull that off. He's kind of some interesting shapes, right? Mm -hmm. If he's actually as complicated as he is because he's, you know, a reptile. Turtles are reptiles, right? I feel like uh, they are. Yes. Yeah, I feel like they are, but... I don't think they're mammals. I know they're not mammals, but they're I didn't know vegetables. if they were a separate subclass of reptiles or they had specific, you know, how sometimes... They're, they're... not birds or avians. Well, you never know anymore. Bees or fish. I don't think... Well, I don't no, actually no. have a problem with bees being fish. I understand the legislation trying to protect the bees. I'm just making a joke, but I'm not step... I'm not trying to step in nothing. I Look, be in, be you, in you nothing. can only fly, find the fish bees on the flat earth side of the planet what it is is they just have they just had to figure out how to save some i bees. know what it is i'm just kidding okay not trying to start nothing amphibians amphibians that's right they could be yeah so here we go i'm gonna bring down a little cow that sort of group neck that's of going creatures on here that live both in water and non-water but then there's the non-aquatic and this, this is a land tortoise so he's definitely not an amphibian. So I'm just kind of doing little sketches in to know where he is. Now I'm going to put some more detail into this. So I'm going to get my burnt sienna and my Mars black together and a number four round brush. And I'm going to very just carefully sort of sketch in his little space with a bit more detail. If you're doing chalk, you would just continue to follow along in chalk lines. Um, I'm going to just wing it though. So I'm just like that you know I'm like oh I can just totally do this it's just no big deal I feel like there can be non-aquatic turtles thus tortoises and yeah. then you could have 
like the human aquatic ape. Yeah, it's that back, so you're giving him a little bit. Which is, is he going to be like my roosters? Is he going to have a whole bunch of turtles? <laughs> <laughs> Turtle tood. I'm thinking it's a possibility. Ah, oh, it's such a good oh, thing. Um, in painting, yep. we that have so great. much less pressure on how we draw initially because we've got to fill in zones of color and value. So just general placement. The bug wants to know what we call a flying turtle. Hmm. Uh, and then the, uh, a shelly copter. Oh, good one. Good one there. So we like um, silly jokes are in here. I'm going to come in and refine a little bit his feet. I'm not going to worry about little details yet like the claws because honestly those are so detailed and we've got so much to paint and we would paint them out anyways. I'm just trying to keep the major lines of what we're going to be seeing. The line. Right. I picked him because actually there wasn't that much of him showing. He was in the stage. By the way, this is really a whole stage for them in their in their hatchingness because they absolutely like go. <laughs> I watched some things. I, I I had to do research. I had to know, right? This is an adolescent atypical Zen tortoise. Now they're a baby. If they're coming out of the shell, they're babies. Well, it's not a teenage mutant ninja turtle. It is not. So it is not a frog army. Thank adolescent goodness. atypical Zen tortoise. Have you guys seen this thing about the frog army? Who's heard about this frog army? I now have a frog army. Oh my goodness! This this person and and they're anonymous. With uh, the guesses that I've seen is that it's in the UK. Saved millions of frog eggs and hatched them in their backyard pond. And then release them into the neighborhood. <laughs> Which there's and a how whole they bunch got a of frog apocalypse. And what's funny is there's that everyone's... a million and four hundred thousand ba like baby frogs just in everybody's yard. You have to know that they are not blessing him. And what's funny is that in nature that happens from time to time. It does. So it's totally like not that big a deal. What it, it really means is that we have some very fat local predators now. Yeah. But it, it's like you shouldn't be doing that all the time every year. That would be a true frog apocalypse. It's just like, man, you really just worked for them clicks right there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just coming around and kind of sketching myself. Just just some general thoughts about how rough this eggshell would be, right? We want to know oh. how rough the eggshell would be. Deborah had a question. Oh, I would love to answer Deborah's question. Do you use heavy body acrylics and what brand, if I, so? I do. I use heavy body acrylics and I use Sennelier, which is the acrylic. Uh, it's one of the oldest paint companies in the world. Um, it's actually older than Golden Artist Colors, though Golden Artist Colors is kind of the origin of acrylics. Um, I use Golden Artist Colors. Uh, I used Artist Loft Level 3. I'll use M. Graham. I use um daco amsterdam there's a list i have a blog on my website where i just talk about all the acrylic paint brands that i do use and then i list all the acrylic great paint brands that i have heard of oh but i haven't used all of them so i can't recommend all of them that would be pretty dishonest of me you know what you should do mm. you should travel the world and try all the paint all of it that's your, your job <laughs> You should be like, my job is to go to all the places of the world and try your paint. It would be really cool if that was my job. Uh, oh, yeah, here's the thing. Whether you're coming from Facebook or you're here from YouTube, here's the thing. Um, if you get, uh, if, if I message you from Instagram, I, I generally answer questions, but I don't generally just message people um, like in a cold call kind of situation where I'm like, hey, stealthing up in your DMs. I don't really do that. Uh, there are several accounts that are not hacks. They just pretend to be me. And they use my picture and everything. But they have zero followers. So if you're ever wondering if it's really me, check the number of followers attached to the account. And if there's zero or just a couple, it's definitely not me. Also, I'm not going to ask you for your credit card or your money um, unless you're signing up on our website for our patronage. And I guess YouTube could do it here, but that's YouTube. Doing it for the channel memberships. So, you know, Ooh. just saying. Have you ever painted on wood? I have painted on wood, Valerie. And I liked it so, so. You've kind of, it's very absorbent. So you've just got to kind of go into it prepped. And I would actually, I switched to a soft body paint for that because it's wetter. 
Can I do a seahorse painting sometime? I love seahorses, says Chris. You, I have done a seahorse painting. I was say. And if somebody could drop the link for Chris, I'd appreciate it. All right, let's put up a step and we'll head on. We're on to the third. Dirt, dirt, Amy wants doo. to be a supervisor. And Heather says, do you think this tele tortoise is shell-shocked? <laughs> you guys are so funny. What? So silly. What? All right, I'm going to get... Uh, uh, you know what? I'm going to use one that you guys can find easier. This is a Simply Simmons number six brush. It is made with hog bristles. Um, I use a lot the Raphael Artini, but sometimes you guys uh, have trouble finding these or, or they can be pricey. So this is the economy quality one of a, a good hog brush. All right. So if someone can grab that seahorse link for Chris, that would be amazing. Well, yeah, I'm going to come looking. here. And I'm going to mix my background color again. All right. I'm going to add a smidge of black to it this time. Just even deepen it up, right? And let's get some white involved. Now, I need it to be dark enough to make the shell show. in here and just kind of paint this in so you can see how what's underneath it really helps a bit all right gives a little bit of color a little bit of depth here that wants to be on there but i say no to you be gone be gone mm. i'm just gonna come here and resist that urge i have to turn the canvas <laughs> To spinny spin it. Yeah, these are nice. Uh, the reason I like the Lazy Susan is you can turn the canvas if you need a better view or you need to get it a more opportune angle. But when you guys are watching at home, it can make doing this really hard. Notice I'm not even being that precious about this. Yeah. Have you seen how not precious I am about it? I'm just scruffing it in. Sometimes you can just scruff stuff in, right? And get some little yellow ochre and some white, just pure on. And I'm also going to work that into here, especially kind of centrally around the shell, because contrast is our friend. Contrast is how light or dark something is. Uh, why does my yellow paint become transparent? I use thick body. The body of the paint isn't doesn't make your paint uh, opaque or transparent. It does it because the pigment load on it is probably low. And also, yellow is in and of itself a transparent color. So the combination of those two, two things can make your yellow a very transparent color. Um, the best yellow, uh, Cad Yellow from Golden is really good. Um, I like my acrylic is pretty high coverage. But still, even the most coverage of any yellow is going to be a little bit light. I'm going to add a little bit of a kind of light value up here. Sort of blend it in. Rut row. What row? I'm, I didn't fill my coffee cup up. Oh, okay. Well, you can heat mine when you go and stir it. <laughs> now, I'm just putting a little bit of a lighter bit of this color sort of loosely, you guys. See, I'm not painting it particularly tidily. Um, and that's just because it doesn't need to be tidy. Mm, for just uh, long enough for you to make a cup of coffee. And I can talk to them for a second because we're not rushing today. Remember, we're relaxing. Uh, Mary Myers. Hi, Mary says, thank you for drawing with the paintbrush. I love doing that even when I'm not confident yet. It's, it's a good way to go. It's good practice. When you're ready. Everything is when you're ready, right? Take your time. Be ready. You know, uh, I, you don't have to feel a lot of pressure. That's not, that's not required of you. you now, as we come down, I might get a little more Mars black and. Hmm. Yeah, a little burnt sienna down here and kind of build up a darker lower half. The reason I'm doing this down here is so that when I build up my stones, they have easy shadows under them. This is a step I can take. River stones or any stack stones you can do this trick with. Where you kind of like go, oh, I know I'm going to have a lot of stones piled here. If I have this kind of dark to begin with, then getting those deep shadows and those shapes will be a little bit easier on me. Don't go up too far with it, though. You want to leave rooms to pile the stones. Ah, what pressure for Scruffy, says Lily Cleveland. Pretty firm pressure. 
Pretty firm pressure when we're being scruffy in our painting. Scumbly, scruffy, laying around, being happy humans. All the happy humans together in one place right now, being happy, being happy. Uh, Michael Art says, hey guys, I haven't been around lately because I haven't gotten any notifications and I came over on YouTube at the right time and it says it wasn't playing, so I don't know what's happening. I think my channel is being repressed, I, but I don't know why. <laughs> Just, I don't know. Um, if you've had trouble getting notifications lately, uh, shout up in the comments here and let us know. And what I'll say is unsubscribe, resubscribe, ring the bell again. If ever you're having trouble getting notifications from the YouTube show, unsubscribe, resubscribe. Don't forget to resubscribe and ring the bell again. I can't tell how many of you I know think you are subscribers, but when you comment in my dashboard, it lets me know if it's a subscriber or not and, and you're not subscribed. And, and, and you guys just come from text and stuff. So I know it happens to a lot of people. I know it happens to me where I think I'm subscribed to a channel. And then I go look and I'm not subscribed to that channel. And I watch them all the time. So that's just something I think it's a YouTube problem. So, oh, Bear at least says it's my first time loving the format. And you guys, where can I find the traceables? So the traceables are on our website. Um, if you go to the, the artsherpa.com, you will scroll down and you'll see a traceable tab, like a little button. And if you click it and open it, and probably our moderators will get you a direct link. Um, it will take you right there and you can keyword search them or scroll through. What? Oh, yeah. So, <sighs> Michael says they are suffering from FOMO and I get it because I have the best art plan. If you see what's upcoming on the lives, I'd hit notify, 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 notify. That would be me. All right, let's try this and we'll come back and do another step. Okay. So while she's trying that, yeah, you can find in... Uh, the link in the description down below there'll be this thing it's a bell and if you smash the bell then it will remind you of things and then if after you smash that bell next to it you say all then you get to know all the things that we do but you have to smash that button first it's a thing let's have some coffee have some coffee let's got coffee I actually get, I got one serious, like, whole rage comment about coffee. And I was like, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I have to drink coffee. You need to have a cup of coffee if you I, have I rage. need to. There's no art lesson without coffee. There just isn't. Rage. All right. Hello. Ah, oh. breathing deeply. Let's all breathe deeply. Breathe in your good creative energy. Breathe out whatever's being burdened on you right now. Whatever you're carrying that you don't need to carry. Put it down. We can pick it back up after this live class. You can pick up any of your worries. Like, but right now, let's put it down for just a second. I think I'm going to grab, trying to decide if I want to do an angle brush or a filbert, because both of them would work really well for painting this in. But I think I'm going to do an angle brush, but a little bit smaller. So this is a half inch angle. And I'm going to go ahead and get it wet, pull out quite a lot of my white. Yeah. And I have just a little bit of the yellow ochre, and I'm even going to get a little of my cad yellow into it. So it's cad yellow, yellow ochre, lots of white. Yep. Perfectly pearls. You bring up an excellent point. There are lots of trouble with both the platform, being YouTube, Facebook, and even our own SMS system, so much so that we're heavily working on making that much more stable we've wanted to do it for years as you guys know because it doesn't let text go to like uh globally and i'm just painting in inside the shell this just base color right here on top just painting it in if you're having any trouble with the type of brush and you don't have to use this brush this isn't a technique that's brush dependent i just picked a brush just so you know that you have no pressure here and it's okay to allow a little bit of the brown to show through because this is off white. And we're just going to paint this in. This is this is eggshell layer one, anyways. Yeah. So it's not a lot of pressure for you guys. But in this, uh, if you guys will just 
hang out in the shell a little bit longer, mm -hmm. then you're we're gonna have so many cool new notification so unification many cool things. Like everyone will get the notification at the same time and we'll all be able to book it from everyone, the shells. Everywhere all at once. All down the beach to the surf. All right. But you gotta get notified. You do. So, and and I know that can be kind of hard how it how it sets it up. If you guys keep signing up, we'll keep investing in ways of notifying you. Yeah. Also on my Facebook page, uh, really everywhere, I put up a uh, schedule of the next seven videos with links. Ooh. So you can save that and put it on the community tab here as well. We're just getting a baseline on this egg, right? Just a hint of the off-white. Is this literally eggshell white? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're painting right now, and it's like eggshell white. Got to start with a base, right? You do? Little Yoda inspired face, or the maybe, turtle. Maybe Yoda's face was inspired by a turtle. Well, certainly uh, the artist that worked on that character design took a lot of inspiration from uh, nature, and it's really fun whenever they give you that behind the scenes look at the concept art. Super worth watching on if you have Disney Plus. The whole series about the concept art of the show just creatively is a fascinating watch. Just a fascinating watch. Look, we're just we're just painting this this value now. And so one thing that we can see is we have a nice value from the background to our egg. Uh, why does Facebook say you must paint one of the Art Sherpa paintings and share it? Because the group is for the Art Sherpa, and so many people come in just wanting to join Facebook groups. So what we found was the easiest to make sure that people that were joining the group were watching the show. Okay. Before had, they started sharing art was to say, hey, share your favorite Sherpa painting. I had a minor pet peeve because I would find that there were lots of people who were disingenuous about why they were coming in the group. They were there to market their own things, <laughs> ranging from sunglasses to art lessons, which yeah. I was like, what are you doing? Get out of here. So we just found that it was just better to put that up. And, and so far, it's worked pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's, it's just a way to do it. Yeah. It's like, if you're here to learn about this, this but is... But you can just share what whatever doing. art on my personal page. <laughs> yeah. But if you're here to learn about art that we're teaching, we're here to teach it. Not somebody else's stuff. Oh, I thought Danny Tucker said, I set my alarm at Saturday at 1 a.m. And I was like, where do you live, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is looking pretty good. I do want to do one more thing on the step, and I'm going to use my number four round to do it. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of black and brown again together. Uh, so just sort of a deep chocolatey black, and I'm going to paint in around the outer contour lines of the turtle. We have a uh, really great series of paintings coming up, man. I'm excited. I, I'm excited about the baby seal face. I'm excited about the oceanscape on Tuesday with the sea grasses. I've been wanting to do one of those for a minute. I'm excited. Huh. Look at those go. Um, Linda Hall, I thought of something. I did my patronage for a year. Will I get a reminder to renew or should I track that info down? I don't know, John. Do uh, we do we bug our patrons about reciting them? <laughs> yeah, so you get uh when whenever you join our patronage, it notifies you when you're gonna re up your membership. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it gives you a little link to say, Hey, if you don't wanna do this, click here. And yeah, because so, we don't have access to your credit card information. So when you want to cancel, we'll help. We'll always help you. It's just you have to do the canceling. We can't come in. And there, there may it. be a new way for us to do that. We, oh, really? That yeah. would be so great. So if yeah, I think there may be some things we can do. We're work, always working on improving this, guys. So 
um, we want to make it just easy for everything. Let's come down here and kind of low. So the reason we're putting this dark value here, if you're wondering why are we doing this, is because we're wanting to really push some of the objects back into the shell. We're wanting to exaggerate that. And by putting in this devalue, when we add little details, little tiny hints and details of the turtle coming out of shadow, the value scape will be there already. So it's just, this is a great thing to do at this time if you can do it. All right. That's really all that needs to be done on that step. It's not a bad step, is it? No. So, and, and notice, if you can see it, see it's streaky? It's streaky at yeah. this stage. We're just painting a layer. We're just getting a value in. We really almost have an underpainting here is what we've got going on. All right, let's dry it. Okay. Dry it. Dry, 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 dry. Dry, 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 dry. So, while she's drying, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you for checking it all out. And, um, yes, just as they were saying in chat, every every time you your your patronage renews you'll get a little email if it's monthly it's monthly if it's annually it's annually that says hey you're going to be renewing or you have renewed and here is your links to your dashboard so that you want to change any of this stuff you can and if you ever have any issues with that you can email us support at the com, and we'll help you all right. Uh, Chrissy C says, I have burnt orange. Would that work? It would it just be, a, you know, you'd have to correct for the bias of the orange. For the red. Um, perfecting pearls. Do you have any sea turtle paintings? Yes, I do. I have one uh, swimming through coral that's realistic. I have a very simplistic silhouette one. And now this. You painted underwater once, too. No, the one that's realistic in the coral. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. okay. All right. Um... <laughs> And did I get my hair cut? Yes, I did. But the, the cool, funny video joke that we told about that, if you got the, the fire fairy that's coming up next weekend, if you're a patron, you got to see it because you, you got it in the drawing video for the fire fairy. Um, but next weekend at the intro of the fire fairy, you'll see me do a cool thing and some editing of John. But I did get my hair cut. We had fun. You know what? This little duder. Bye, Amy. I hope you have a very good day. This little duder could be named Shelly. This little duder could be named Shelly. That, that's not untrue. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a round hog brush for this next bit on the shell because I'm going to want to sort of shade it and mat it out um, as much as I can. And sometimes a hog will let me do that. If it doesn't, then I will get into one of my Princeton round blenders. If you don't have this brush, the number 12 Princeton Select Round Blender, and I don't have one uh, currently for sale, like if you're watching this years later, make sure I don't have one for sale. Um, <laughs> so I'll have a better one. But this is a good brush, and it's not too hard on the pocketbook. Hi, Rahil. It's so good to see you. Now I'm going to come here and add a little more white to my mix, which was the yellow ochre cad yellow and white. Add a little more white to it. I'm going to come to the top and just kind of wiggle back and forth this brush. And what we're doing is kind of creating a soft mat of that eggshell there. You need to sometimes get a little water on my brush, but it's it's not totally a dry brush. I have a noisy chair. But it's chair. not a wet brush. huh? I have a noisy chair. You have a really noisy chair. I should get you a new chair. I'm so disturbed by your chair. So weird, the stuff that, like, you prioritize and then, you, you know, you don't self-care. Isn't that weird how we do that? All of it's us? It's just, I love the chair. It's just squeaky. All right. Adding a little bit of my cad yellow and my yellow ochre. And maybe here at the edge of my shell. Just kind of yellowing it a bit. See how I'm going there? It's a very light yellowing. I'll be back doing uh, we would back doing some cracks and everything in the shell, just kind of getting it together. Now, coming over here, this is sort of interesting because the shell's quite light, but it definitely has some shading and some value. So I'm going to add a little, little color into that as we start to talk about that, right? Thank you, Gilbert. This kind of scruffly motion that I'm doing is almost a, a technique that we call scumbling. It's almost a scumble. 
Um, it's just about being multi-directional. Notice that the brush stroke goes a lot of places and the pressure to my brush is fairly firm. That's how I'm getting that. The water load on my paint, eh, not too heavy, not too heavy. Maybe a little more yellow ochre into that, but still white, right? Let's kind of deepen that hue a bit. And then if I want a gray, I take my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna together. Makes a really terrific gray. I'm gonna come to the bottom and just make sure that I've got some shading. Now the trick will be to soften this edge going up. So blending wet into wet is a good way to do that. If that isn't working for you, you may need to get some Golden's uh, uh, gloss glazing liquid out and use that to slow your paint's drying time down and to allow you to glaze and, and subtly adjust values that way. We don't want to lose that this is white though. All right, so that's, that's the kind of intrinsic battle that we're having here. And I like that the egg is fairly colorful. I'm going to tip this up, just making sure that I'm seeing everything the way I feel like I'm seeing everything. Sometimes even just some blue and white is kind of useful as a shadow. See that? Yeah. The little blue and white. It's not even graying it with burnt sienna. I'm going to pull out a little black and blue and I'm going to come up from the ground and I'm going to make sure that going up into the shell is just from the underneath it up is just a little bit dark. Right, so that the shadow and the deepest shadow of the shell are kind of really close to each other. Nice. All right, so we're doing pretty good here. All right, we're getting some shell shading. Yep. <laughs> Don't be shell shocked, as we were joking earlier. And you know, I pre Lindsay was asking; she was concerned about keeping up with fake accounts and how YouTube and we handle that. And I would say we YouTube really have, handles that. We don't. We have a really good automated tool set that helps that taken care of. So security is pretty good on this stuff, Lindsay. Yeah, you don't YouTube's need to... pretty good. Facebook and Instagram they seem to struggle a little more. But we. We have access to lots of tools, and we'll stay on top of that for you. So don't but I, need I can't, I can't, well, I can't do anything about it. Not yours. No, we, we can't fix your account, but we don't need to track them on our website because we have a lot of. Yeah, there would be no way to do that. They're bots and things. There's just not a way to do that, you know. Our website automatically kicks bots off and does that kind of stuff. Yeah, our website does. And YouTube catches what it catches, but. Yep. You know, it's just the world we live in now, isn't it, anymore? Yep. Our security there. Ah, uh, it is a hi. Thank you, George Osa, or I. I hope I'm not slaughtering that. George Osa says, "Amazing turtle. It's cute. I love drawing and painting animals. Me too." Yeah. Ah, I just got my Jerry's Artorama box at my door. Uh, Sherry Lockett, and I'm so glad you're here, Sherry, because this painting is dedicated to Oliver and your family. And I hope you got to see that at the beginning. And we're just sending you lots of love. Now I'm gonna dry this, and we'll continue on. Okay. Oh, so check down there in the link in the description below. I was just reading chat, a little spaced out. Like, oh, what's going on over here? So, yep, check the link in the description below. We'll be ready to go. Doo -doo -doo.
no, but there's all sorts of cool stuff down there. Links to the website uh, and things like that. Sure. Shh. Sure. Is that a dry? <sighs> So we're gonna start painting him, Mister Mister Turtleface. Okay. Let's start putting him him in. He's got some interesting stuff going on. I really looked at: Do I want to um, even, you know, add some uh, Naples yellow to it? But then I was like, No, I think I, I think I know where I want to go with him. And Kimberly um, asks, How do I attach the canvas to the Lazy Susan? Hey, tape. <laughs> Four little rolled over pieces of tape. I use my painter's tape that is a little bit too old to tape down. So like it goes through stages for me. I use it to mask off. And then when it doesn't mask off anymore, I roll it up and use it to kind of grip my painting to the lazy Susan. All right, let's start here. And we know we've got some interesting stuff. So the top of him, I'm going to get a little more, uh, that's black, Mars black, burnt sienna, and a little bit of ultramarine blue. And I'm going to start thinking about how, you know, he's got a bit of a, dark area coming up to the cow and how the eye kind of goes up. There's some interesting little areas here. I'm just trying to add a dark value. And then I'm going to come into my lighter, light, light, light color. Again, really more yellow. Yeah. I'm going to come along with the eye and just make sure we've got a nice little... We want to make sure that that value, that, that ridge of that eye is highlighted yeah we exaggerate these things at this stage hmm. can you mute me for a second babe i can't you are muted do you need to be disappeared to disappear you i can disappear see you don't even exist there it's just a, a hand painting disembodied hand It'd be like cousin it painting you'd have to have someone narrate It'd be, it'd be like, I wonder if you could have like, uh, I'll bring, I'll bring her back. I won't just hijack her show. Let me find where I can bring her back. There she is. Come around here. I want to leave a little bit of room on that eye. I know I'm going to come back with a little bit of cat right into here to sort of pink it up. I'm just shading things up right now. We're just kind of getting it. If you come into the cat red, see that right there? It just, it, it, it's amazing how it can make it feel like there's a uh, warmth or circulation in the, in the thinner skins. I'm here. Can you imagine Wednesday oh, Adams narrates? Oh, that's a new series coming out. Wednesday is a new Netflix series. But could you imagine Wednesday narrates it <laughs> doing a painting party painting? Okay, that would be a fun 13 Days of Halloween thing to do. Think on that. Well, we could do it. I know we could. That'd be so funny. <laughs> All right, now as I come around the oh, outer thing. cow. It's Thing. That's right. It's Thing. It was um, Thing. It was the Cousin It. It was Cousin It that was the furry dude with the hat. That's right. I'm coming around here and we're going to kind of trim that. We're just starting to get those values right. It's not the details of the turtle. Oh, Deborah Evans. Uh, Deborah says, Cinnamon John and Mods, Sherpettes, you make the world better. You guys make the world better, man. I don't know what I'd do without y'all. I'm super grateful that you're here in our lives. I'm going to come down and just get a little more brown into it. And I'm coming across here. So it's a little brown, but my brush had the white and other color in it. And again, what we're doing is we're just making sure that light and darks are represented. I might have to go even darker for in here because there's um, kind of a lot of shadow. I'm going to just work that around here. I'm just, I haven't even rinsed my brush out. So the paint is on my brush that's there, and then I'm carrying it through here. So that's letting me get into these things. Uh, Benita says, I can't wait to paint this one. I was up late with uh, um, a flare-up of my autoimmune disease and painted a little cowboy. Your videos bring me peace during the pain. I'm so grateful. 
I wish you so much relief from that. Um, I think we're close to that, though. I keep seeing really optimistic scientific discoveries coming, and I think we're close to something that will really bring a lot of relief to people's lives. And until then, we paint. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to just come here and say, I'm going to exaggerate the value of dark here around this little nose. I'm just taking black to exaggerate that. Oh, thank you, Deborah. Uh, I just appreciate it so much. Coming here. Just, you know, sometimes you do that. You like, oh, mm, I'm going to. And I make sure. Now I'm getting a little bit of my black and brown together, and I'll start to lighten this darkening around the head and eye a little. I'm just going to make sure that that's good. And then I'll come back here. This is a little. Back here by this little ear space is a little bit darker. So it's always interesting to me because I just, I really enjoy figuring out his little deal. Got little, two little nostrils there. Well, it's not that important right now, but later it will be important. I'm going to come in and get a little of my gray on here. And come under my eye. A little bit around. Mm -hmm. And you can see already how the toning the canvas really helps us. Back into my light color. Kind of lightening that up right there. And then we're just going to get in some basic here. Now it's interesting because I want to do lighter scales to do the shapes. I need to pick the darker color that um, is between the scales, if that makes sense. So I'm going to take a little of my brown and a little of my altering blue All right. and my white, and I'm going to come in and I paint these. So these aren't their finer co final color, but this is the easiest way to get those little scale patterns in. Because I'll paint the little highlighted scales. And then this little space will create a shadow between those scales, and that will really help help the toes, help everything start to show. And we've only got a couple claws that are kind of peeking out here. Yeah, see Blanton's like, how do we do those scales? Yeah, we come in later. We come in later, and it's actually easier than you think. It's like putting puzzle pieces together. It's a, one of those surprising things when you do it the first time. You're like, oh, I got it. This is how I do all the scales for all these, like, uh, defined uh, reptiles. That's coming along and making sure that this is dark out here. Now we don't want to lose our our values. Now we've got to dry it. Um, I'm going to say thank you to Cindy. So grateful I found your channel. Help me with my mental health more than you know. Love and light to you and uh, to Cinnamon and John. Thank you so much. Yeah. And love and light back to you. I hope you are feeling good. Um, it's just so good to be with you guys today. Shall we dry this together? We should Let's dry, dry it together. So if you guys are drying at home, um, try to dry without heat because heat can cause non-good things to occur in lower quality paint. Now, even in higher quality paint, it can cause some weirdness so it's because its paint is made of a polymer. Polymer is heat responsive. Um, Unless it's designed to be not heat responsive. And this is not. This is designed to stick to canvas. Well, best not to use heat. Did it, did it. Uh, Rahil says, wait before going, I have one last question. Can Sherpa teach me accounts and economics? She would be the best teacher. Not in accounts and economics. <laughs> <laughs> Get anyone else but me. Um, not is for this, nothing. Is this a step? This is a step. Okay. 
I'm going to make some of my gray again, which is my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue. And make this nice kind of shadow color and get a little white into it. I might even bring it a little more to the blue. See how we're doing? Yes. And I will start out on some of my cracks. Some of these are lighter than you think. I still want to. I still want them to be a little bit exaggerated, right? Yeah. So add a little white to it if I need to lighten it and get some along here. So we need to create cracks because you know he's hatching. He needs to be able to hatch. I may even for just ease of my time here, I'm going to add some of my. Gloss glazing liquid to the palette. It looks white. It isn't. It's clear. Benita, thank you so much. Uh, gloss glazing liquid by Golden. It's the only product like this I recommend because it's the only one that both slows the drying time down of the paint and allows you to glaze. So far, that I found. If you find another one, let me know. I think uh, maybe uh, the floating medium from uh, One Stroke may be similar too. I'm not, I'm not confirmed on that because I haven't been able to talk to the paint chemist on the issue. Come in here and then, you know, you can exaggerate some of these little cracks. So sometimes a little darker shadow. Isn't that fun how we just... His egg is as much of an interesting topic to paint as, as he is, right? Just very cute, cute, cute. Just pulling little cracks into the egg. That's the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue, my number four round. Some of the glazing medium and come here and kind of blend that out, right? Just working the little cracks. You know, and you can exaggerate things, right? You can do better than nature gave you sometimes. In art, not like, you know. Not suggesting an island of Dr. Moreau situation here. I'm just saying. You can saturate the colors beyond that which nature provides. Exactly. We're not suggesting a, a porpoise deer elope. No. No, not at all. Oh, interesting. Interesting suggestion cool. there. Do you see little horns? And it could ride in the surf? Ah. <sighs> See, you know, you got the whole mammal stretch there. Blow hole, horns, surf, <laughs> galloping, fast, leaping. So. You're just putting little cracks into this little space, right? Shade them out. And then when I have shaded them, another thing I can do is I can come back into my shell color, if you'll remember, is my had yellow, a little bit of my uh, yellow ochre and a lot of white. And you can kind of uh, pull some of these up, right? And that is enjoyable, too, like pulling up the values of that. Ooh. Gilbert says that plaids bringing up their game in the blending gel. I'm not surprised. Medium. So maybe worth checking out. Yeah, if you guys need me to test something like that, I am up for it. If it's like, will it blend? Huh. <laughs> kind of like the will it blend from Blend Tech. Like, oh my gosh. I just thought of a new series, John. I know. Will it blend? <laughs> <laughs> hey, other YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. 
Get to, off my ideas. I'm, I just, uh, Dangerous I'm trying to be funny, but I'm probably not funny. <laughs> just adding little highlights to the shell. See, you guys? Can we do a group activity experiment, please? I don't know what that is, but I'm all in for it. A group activity. What would that be? Who mm. asked that? Where's that? Donna asked that. Group activity? I don't know. I don't know. Go for it, Donna. Let's do it. You guys help me design the fire fairy. It's coming up next weekend, so why not? See, Heather, I think the jackalope is too mundane. You might have to, like, cross that with a shark and a bear, and then we'd have something. Like, can you imagine a rabbit the size of a bear that had shark teeth and horns? No, I don't think that would be a good idea at all. I'm going to be really honest. I think it'd be a terrible idea. I'm going to add a little more white and a common to find this little edge here. But it's a vegetarian. Like a hippo. Well, hippos are no joke. I'm not, I'm just not saying they are, but they're not like cruising out there going, I'm going to eat you. You just stay out of the water. I think that they actually do. But I don't know. I don't live there, so I don't know. All right. Look at our shell now. Doesn't our shell look nice? It's just it's just looking so good and it's dry. So we'll come back and we'll work back on Mr. Turtle Pants again. All right. So this is a step or you we dry? We need a step. Yeah. Okay. My coffee's cool. I'll warm that up. So sad. And while, stir it. And while we're warming that up, you could think about a hippo crossed with a cheetah. Honestly, I can see that in my head and all I see is just a really fat hippo <laughs> cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fast can't turn just, <laughs> just unable to turn mm, that's what it is so it into it <laughs> one direction <laughs> right, i'm gonna dry this i think and then you go heat my coffee so this is a i like this game it's a good idea oh, so strange okay so need, so strange we step yeah. yeah step step i'll step i'm not sure if i stepped yet but we'll step we'll again step. that's the step that's a good step, baby tortoise. Oh, you named it correctly in the thing. It's tortoise. Turtle for YouTube's search algorithm, tortoise for what is accurate. <laughs> so I'm going to start coming in and adding little details uh, to, to him. I think I'm going to begin on the legs. Okay. I'm going to make a very light scale color. It is a little more yellow. I'm going to get little smidges of yellow till I get into it where it's warm enough. And I'm going to come here, and on this outside, I'm going to make a little mark. Marking in the little scales. All right. So the trick to this is, is that what you do, you don't want, you want to make sure that there's little spaces between the scales. Here on the side, they kind of line up along the edge going up. Like, so here's something that she's not having. She's not having it. See how we're going? It's nice, right? Sometimes I'll put little dots in to just create those little those little tortoisey scales. I'm gonna come here and if you lose the space between the scales, you can always come back with a small brush. And we're gonna even kind of glaze this a little bit later to create um some kind of scaly depth to it and more personality, but right now we're just getting in the pattern. The pattern is our first job. Hi, Michael Art. How are you doing today? Ah, scalloped potatoes, says Gilbert's artistry. I mean, yeah, in a way, right? In a way, it's just... These can be, I think, really good. Um, this type of patterning in a painting is good for... For me, for my mental well-being, it helps me relax. And it helps me kind of 
let put some things down if I need to, you know, and that is always a good thing. Now, in the forward part of his leg and down, um, the scales are a little bit bigger, and then they're kind of smaller coming up the sides. That's how we're getting that. Then I can come here and make them small again. And I'm sure they change as he gets older. Kind of that beginning of his patterning in. All right, I'm gonna sip my coffee. <laughs> uh, perfect perfecting pearls. Do you glaze over certain parts to get a closer color match? Yeah, you do. You can absolutely glazing is powerful. You could dry brush it in as well to tone it, or um, use water even to glaze it once it's dry. And we'll get in there, but we want to kind of get this contrast going and then tune it in from there. This coffee is so hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I'm okay. I'm sorry. I wasn't really complaining. I was just kind of. Come here and kind of add these little tips. And then. Just making, just getting them patterns. Now, to do this, I do the uh, brush stroke up. I could turn the um, Lazy Susan to get better angle to my scales, but that is, that's what I've got going on. And again, if you lose the spacing between the scales, you can put them back. Uh, Sheila Hubbard, is the glazing fluid like a clear acrylic paint? It's, well, it is clear and it is a polymer, but the reality of the polymer is that it is um, going to be a little thinner. It can be clear and it slows the drying time down of the paint. So in other words, like the, just the nature of the polymer. So in acrylic, they can really decide how fast or slow the paint dries. Um, uh, if it's sticky, if it's thick, if it's thin, um, if it's stretchy, it's amazing. If it's fluffy, they have a lot of control in the, in the making of these. Making little scale size shapes. Uh, all right. Uh, does cinnamon have a tutorial on painting wood? Boy, do I. I have a few. I have a few. Um, and then a really funny one that we did on, on Facebook, actually, unique, like on its own. And uh, boy, it got funny. There's just only so many times you can say wood and hardwood in a painting. Before and stroke you your start, wood. Yeah, it just, you start cracking up after some point where you're just like, you become a nine-year-old in your uh -huh. humor. A little bit up there. There we go. That's working pretty well, guys. We got a lot done there. All right? We're working it. We're working it. I'm going to put this down for a second, and I'm going to make life easy on myself by grabbing a liner. This is a number one Princeton liner. It's just a fine brush. Gives me a fine detail line. And I'm going to take my uh, 
burn sienna and my ultramarine blue together and I'm going to make my claws at first this way. There we're done. Just getting them little claws in initially. That's cute. We will be lightening them. Uh, I can't put these in yet because they're over this area where I'll be putting rocks and things. So I clawed too early. <laughs> it's okay. Now I'm going to get back into my um, hog brush, which is the number eight D'Artney by Raphael. And a little of uh, this here. So I take my yellow ochre and my cad red and they do pretty good make sure that this is kind of warmed up that way as you have it yep as you hope maybe a little bit here I'm going to go ahead and get a little white into it. Maybe a little more yellow ochre. Very lightly dry brush in maybe like a little bit of implied shell or space back here. These are things you're not seeing all the way. They're in the shadow. But they're there a little bit. It's just the part of the turtle. Notice that we can make those little spaces and that kind of implies, well, just the, the shape of it. I might come in with like a slightly larger, lighter color here. How that feels on the little scale. A little bit. Pull in nicely. Okay. And get that looseness in. We have some different little areas. I'm going to pull a little more of my cad yellow down here just for areas where I've got to have more yellow on the face. A little bit of white there. Just lightening up and kind of rolling that skin around a little bit. Along the top lip. I'm going to take this color over to this brown here. And kind of imply in some like light scaling there. See how we're doing? I do. Adding a lot more white to the high yellow mixture. And yeah, it's good to um, really play with those textures. Notice how I'm just touching the brush down to make those little scales. Mm -hmm. While we're down, we're just touching the little brush down to make some scales. Uh, 
that's working on his little facers. If this is dry, I'm going to come in and grab a little bit of my white and yellow with my glaze. You could do this, uh, you know, thin it with water. It just takes it longer to set. We used to think it didn't set at all, but what we learned is it just takes it longer to set. Just kind of glazing that back with a little bit of yellow, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't take out the work that I've done. It's still there. It's still very visible. Kind of playing with those. A little more into the yellow. Just little touches of it here and there. Warming them up. And then I can get into the gray and the glaze. And I may put a little more burnt sienna into it. A warmer brown. Just kind Lots of, of folks love putting this. that around. So we're just getting there, right? We're just yeah. starting to have some details. I'm going to go ahead and get into my liner, my detail. And this is, you know, my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue. Get a little more burnt sienna into it. So it's, you know, reading obviously is what it is. Mm -hmm. What's the best mix for a glaze? Asks Heather best mix for glaze well if you're doing water you have to be a little bit careful you want to thin the paint but sometimes it can take um, and i have an article golden arts colors wrote a whole article about it can take a couple weeks to fully cure and set and bind um and that can be problematic with like student paints and stuff like that so that's where we sort of think about that on professional paints with glazing liquid like this it's fairly indestructible mm -hmm. which is kind of nice Go ahead and kind of get a little brown into it here. A little bit of the light yellow and white. Like that there. So it just implies some scales there when I do those little dashes. What happened is there was a hidden drop. Hidden drop. A hidden drop. I'm getting some darker color. Trying to make sure that we've got shadows where we need shadows. The nice thing about, you know, kind of working the glazes and the detail brushes when you're doing this. Continue to come back. And again, you want it to be sort of darker because it's got an interesting little snubby nose. Gotta work my little snub nose. Be snub nose. Yeah. Probably be snub nose turtle. <laughs> I don't know. Or. Or, or a tortoise or something. I don't know. Um, that's doing pretty good. He's looking pretty lovely here. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, that's sometimes so cute. you just put little scales in just so the texture is there. Mm hmm Helps kind of bring him all together because he's got it. Get some dark yellow, maybe. Remember how I said if you lost your shading between your scales, you could put it back? Yeah. See how we just did that there? We added that back into his face. He just said, oh, baby, you lost your scale. And he said, I did. They're all gone, and it's so frustrating, but I want them back. So I'm taking this liner, and I'm using the shadow color. Trying to get that back into his little faces. Put those little scales back in there on his face. Ah. <sighs> Mary Meyer says, why did the baby turtle not like his home? Thought it was cracked. <laughs> All right, a little more black on my brush here. Let's come in and really deep in that eye. Let's add a little line, curl kind of in the scaling. <coughs> I'm along underneath here. This is just, you know, you come in and you work the details. I'm along this little edge here. We're making a shadow in that cowl. See how that just, oh, wow, he really just pulls together fast, doesn't he? Kind of fun. Like I said, if you need to come back with color to put, you know, some scales back in, you can absolutely do that. Oh, the YouTubes. Oh, because I got quiet. John's like, uh-oh, I got to fill in. Oh, no, I just looked over at the YouTubes and have so many ideas. To have so many about. ideas. How is everyone doing today? Good. There are lots of chatty chat chatters. They like the tortoise duder. I like the tortoise duder. Look, his little nostrils are there. i to make sure I got that. correctly with his little his little nosers he's got a little nosy nose doesn't he now it is i did a tortoise remember you did the best tortoise it was, i liked that one you did really good and really good john john had done a, a pencil piece was it pastel uh, or it pencil was pastel gorgeous Bl on black paper yeah really good i might someday do more of those i enjoyed pastel Pastel is super fun. Messy, but fun. All right. Well, he's done pretty good, isn't he? Indeed. We're just coming along, just making sure he's great. If I got to get some glazing medium in there, I do. I don't worry about it. I had a little opening here, so I want to make sure that I've got a little more you know, and I can maybe make the front of the scales lighter and You can keep just playing with them, right? Yeah. No line under there. It's doing pretty good. I like him. Now, I'm going to take a little of my blue smidge of white. Just a little bit. Kind of add that up there, and then I will go ahead and get some white. Just to get his little emotion in his little eye, and he's looking so cute. He is. 
Oh, I hate when the little drop gets on the wall, on the, on the brush. Here. You just play with it till you get it there. That's what you're doing. You're just turtles are all the turtles all the way down, my friends. <laughs> it is. Notice how as we come in and add the details, it gives all the scales much more personality, doesn't it? This is the number one Princeton liner, and I'm just kind of getting it in here and just making sure that I've got the kind of value that I'm looking to get. Ah, it's so nice to do this this weekend. It's been such a, woof. we all know we're all in it together. Yeah. And it's just been, and it's so nice to have this moment and this time, uh, you know, where, where you are in the world, right? Being able to put your life down for just a second and enjoy the process of painting. Now, I do need to give him some details on his little cow, so I'm going to get a little nice white on here and... Little wrinkles on there. And there's a little wrinkles on his little space. He's just got the wrinkles. Oh, he's so pretty. Kind of adding a little bit of you no know, yellow and look at there we go. So that's how we got those little wrinkles around his neck. I think we're just doing brilliant, aren't we? Yeah. Now I may want to kind of add some shadow to the top of that, so I might come over with a glaze and kind of. Yeah, I'm knocking that back a bit. And that's what you can do. You can come back in and, and knock things back if you need to. Little values on his little scale. We're like, we're, we're not being boring. We're being interesting, aren't we? Yeah. Taking a little bit of that blue gray and pushing those values. All right. I think we've got that for a second. I think we need to send him in this my birthday tomorrow. Can you hi say happy birthday to me before you go as dance recital videos? Happy birthday. <laughs> we right. can't sing the the song song because it's oh, no. copyrighted now. Yeah. <laughs> but but we could sing it in text. All right. Yeah, you could always Fuzzy do the, means out of focus, Lindsay. There's the happy birthday. The rock says Seymour. Yeah, no, he's not done. <laughs> happy birthday. <sighs> happy birthday. birthday. <sighs> May the candles on your cake burn like village in your wake. Happy birthday. <sighs> happy birthday. <laughs> 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 well, the Vikings never learn. First you pillage, then you burn. Happy birthday. <sighs> happy birthday. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Let's try this. Uh, okay. So, and don't forget to check in the links down below for all the fun stuff to do. Um, thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining us. We enjoy having you here. Um, it's just lovely, lovely, lovely. Let's look over and see all our friends hanging out and chat today.
Okay, but I think ah. this is a step a step. Steppy steppy. Let me make sure I'm step right. Number four round up here. Stepping, stepping. All right, hold on. Here. Just... <laughs> Life with Paul says I love that birthday song. It's the birthday dirge. <laughs> You're looking for it. All right, I'm going to add some rocks, friends. I got to add some rocks. And my rocks are going to be uh, a little bit of my black and my burnt sienna and yellow ochre and white, I think, is where we're going to go with these rocks. And we're going to start out with this front focal rock. Now, this is the dark color of the rock, it's not the lightest color of the rock. It is just rockish. And much like the scales, we're going to come through here and kind of build these out in a pattern. Oh, thank yep. you, Ceci. Add a little bit of that height there. and I hope I say that correctly. Now, if you need to, you can always come back in with some black and exaggerate the spaces between the rocks. It did I step up? I did step I think you did. Yeah, I think if so. If you didn't, man, we're in trouble. Back into this, and then come here and say, oh, there's there's a little bit of one peeking here. Next one will be nine. And you got to remember that, that there's little gravels and bits of things that fit between them, right? So even as you're... More yellow ochre. Even as you're painting these very dark stones in. And guys, these are dark at this stage. If you've done stones with me before, you're familiar with the deal. But it is an easier way to do it, and I do like it. Just remember that all the things, I'll get some black here, and I'll make sure that these have... Just a little bit of definition that we're going to play with. And then they'll all be separate little rocks. Kind of like the turtle had scales. It just, it's just the journey, my friends. It's just the journey. I think I'm going to make one that's kind of tall here. This one will come out to the side. Again, we will, we're flattening them now, but we're going to pull them out as separate little beings later. Whenever you paint rocks like this, uh, the song Tom Sawyer by Rush comes into my head. Because it rocks. Is that, What? <laughs> Yeah. That was so random. Well, there's a whole lyric part of it. It's rocky. Very rocky. Yeah. So it's just good. You just put them in. That was a runaway camera. These are sort of rounded. So they're like little river stones or desert stones that have, you know, the environment has perhaps broken them up from one another. Oh, babe, can you plug that in? Okay. Uh, The pad. It's It's... I'm going to lose it in a second. I I think I just had... Right, yeah. I hope good. <laughs> I can always come back into my black and just make sure that... These all have little spaces around them. See, I would just go around them and then they just become rocks. The tricks here are try to make these irregular kind of shapes. I've got a little bit of a repeat going, but it's okay because I'm going to come back and make some big differences. Mm. Heather's reminded by, of the Rolling Stones. Oh, yeah, that that would be a good one, the Rolling Stones. See, I'm, mine wasn't as direct as that one. Now, these would be stones that rolled, though, so. Down that river. I'm going to put one in there between the rocks. You know, you just you just put them in between the rocks. Do you know how they're rolling stones? Hmm. There's no moss on them. Or it's just so hot where they are, they can't grow moss. Okay, stop bringing science into this. Uh -oh. 
I try not to bring science into it. Not that I don't believe in science. I super do believe in science. Science and logic has no place here. It does. It has a ton of places here. But the truth is, is that I don't consider myself qualified to explain science. As you do. Let me see if it's if it's got it. Because it's just really struggling. Oh yeah, it's got it. Just giving me grief. That's all it's doing. It's going to give me grief. All right. Let me try one more time, guys. Huh. It, it recognized me sideways. <laughs> Go figure. All right. Let's call that a step, and then we'll come back, and we'll put the personality into the rocks. Oh, we stepped. Okay. I don't know why I drifted off there. You were thinking about the tortoise. I was thinking about the tortoise. We don't have that much longer. It's surprisingly is going to go fast. I just have to figure out how to get it to stop fading out on me because it's not happy. My references not loving me. All right, General. No, it won't. It's on that power thing, so it won't even help me. Oh, this is miserable. Sorry, guys. I'm just struggling here. I apologize. I will get through. You'll just see me go boom, boom, <laughs> a lot. Okay, we've got to get into the kind of like shape of the rocks. I'm using my brush here. This is a um, hog brush. It's still the number eight. And we're going to come in and just kind of tap up and down. Just the beginning of saying, oh, hey, there's there's this texture. We're making a regular texture. You could use a sponge. You could do a lot of things. But what we're really trying to do is do texture. It's going to take about three layers, four layers of getting it there. But then when it's there, we're going to have the best rocks. And this will make you good river stones. I'll cut garden stones. You can see because the claws go in front of this, that's why they're going to go last. And then I'll, um, at the same time, I'll finish out the shaping of the nose when I do the claws. Are you guys seeing that going in there? Yeah. Yeah. Looks cool. Mm. Again, we're just, just, we're aging them. We're, we're making them geologically interesting at this stage. Yeah. You know? It's it's just the beginning of what we, we've got to do to create a believable kind of floor. I can come into like maybe a little more yellow and everything in between. So the beginning, right? I gotta try to get this again because it just like left me. <laughs> it does not want to play. Okay, so back into our white. All right, back into our white. And I think we're going to get into our gray here as well. Coming along here, and I'm just adding some highlights to the stone. And it's, uh, you know, you, you, uh, 
Make sure you get it randomly around. Little textures. It's a little messy right now at this stage. Is that going to be just too disruptive on the painting, John? I don't know. I can't no. have to reach forward. It looks good. This coming here, and I, you know, these are kind of sandy. They're actually pretty light rocks. So I'm just wanting to, and like the turtle, they're kind of in a yellow range. So right now, we're just getting we're getting some value worked out, some texture. We will darken those that are under the shell and we're gonna we're gonna and work on these edges being a little smoother here in a second. Mm -hmm. I will come along maybe on the edge of my brush and kind of give a a more defined edge. Here we go, just coming along. A little more yellow on that one, but I don't mind. Just layering it up, right? Every layer on a stone adds stone. Mm -hmm. It just gets better. And I haven't even glazed or any of that yet. It's just, or done the little like uh, dotting for the pitting. And we're gonna really work these stones. I know you, you like this reference because you wanted to paint this guy. So sometimes, you know, we've got the one hoots that we just dropped that are for brand, brand, brand new painters, right? They're just two layers of paintings, three layers of paint. Like they're, they're that introduction to these concepts. But, you know, those paintings really do eventually, if you keep painting, turn into this. Hey, look at that go. Like we've got some stones here, don't we? Yeah. Now I'm going to take my burnt sienna and my uh, ultramarine blue. Make a pretty dark color. And kind of glaze and shade some of this. You see where the stones are, you know, maybe kind of tucked in together and they might shade each other. So let's shade some of these stones with a glaze. Shading with a glaze. I love glaze shading. Glaze shading. And these guys are down here, but they are darker, right? Maybe that one's pushed back a little bit because, you know, the brighter one's on top of it. We got this. We know what's up. See how I can use this? Yeah. Also, pull stones out, push stones back in. It's just powerful stuff. It is. Now the stones are just much stonier. Yeah. They're stonier's. They're so much stonier. I'm going to take a little bit of my brown and yellow together. So it's my yellow ochre, my burnt sienna, a little cad yellow. Definitely some white.
Now we're coming back and just adding a little highlight to what we've got. Yeah. Just pushing and punching those up. This is enjoyable, guys. Yeah, it really is. If you thought, oh, I like painting rocks, I have a whole quest, big art quest for you. <laughs> if you do big art quest, uh, was it 2021 was the water that I did to them? Yeah. This, uh, or is this, this, yeah, I it was the so. water. Yeah. Yeah. So many rocks. <laughs> you want to learn how to paint water and landscape and the rocks. There's so many rocks in that. There's no real way to paint water and landscape and not include some, some rocks. Right. You've got, you're going to have some rocks. Look at that go. Those are looking pretty good. They're not bad. They're not bad. It's not bad. I'm going to take a little bit of my glaze. I'm going to have to tip it some. I'm just making sure there's some depth back here. going to definitely rinse that out uh where did i get my lazy susan from asked heather jacobs so this pretty one is pioneer woman and they make them and they've been actually i think the whole pioneer woman line has been for me quite quality i don't know anything about them as people i don't know anything about the company i just you know have bought it so if there's like information that way to know yeah definitely but I don't, I don't yet know anything about that. So just so keep that in mind. Is this a step or are we still? This is, um, let's call it a step and we'll just finish out the rocks in a step. What step are we on? 10. Okay, we've got time. We'll be good. We'll be out by 12. All right, so I've taken a very light color and I put it on my little um, detail brush. And it's still in the stones. It's still in the color of the stones. It just is a lighter color. See how we're kind of like, uh, I'll just pop that out just a regular. We're doing kind of what we did with the, Hog brush, but in a more focused way. We're pitting or making the surface of the stone feel irregular. I could also probably use my grass comb and get a faster result. Um, but I don't know that I put the grass comb. I don't know if it was in this description, so I'm not going to grab it on you. So this will be nice here where this lighter kind of little edge is because it will help the stone uh, break out from the shell. You guys like this so far? I love it. Wait till you do the sail face. Oh, you're going to love the landscape on Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. Um, oh, my goodness. So many good ones coming up. And the watercolors are really kind of fun. I got a bunch of one hoot landscapes and things coming up. In the watercolor 
that I think you guys will really, really like. Uh, does it mean one may have too many art supplies and you can't find your sketchbook? Mm, I don't. No. Huh. <laughs> don't say such crazy things. <laughs> you can never have too many art supplies. <laughs> actually, I may actually be at that point where I have too many art supplies. Um, you know, it's always good to organize the studio. Yeah. Hard to do because you like you want to get in there and paint. And so you're like, oh, I don't want to spend this energy organizing the studio, or do I want to paint? And that's a very challenging kind of thing. Now, remember, guys, if you're mods, you can share the links to uh, everything over here on YouTube. YouTube won't block you or get you in trouble as long as you've got a wrench. So you can go grab links and everything. We had a real problem on Facebook where it just kept uh, banning the mods and putting them in uh, Facebook trouble. So mm. getting to be a little bit of a thing. Actually, quite a serious thing. It started to block us out of our own huh. Facebook. It was like, talking to like, you have used this service wrong. And we're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're using exactly as described. But, you know. So notice that I put some highlights down deep into the stones. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Last touch on here is the dark pits. Mary Myers says, organized. What's that? I don't know. It's a state that I've heard about and I watch on Netflix, but I have not yet achieved. And Danny Tucker says, love the baby turtle. I, I agree. I love it too. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Just, I just painted my own iPad. New thing. Make sure on the checklist, uh, iPad plugged in. Yeah. Yeah. Really, Twix? Really? <laughs> Just little bits of uh, detailing on. Oh, Carol Moore, thank you. And I know we're taking a lot of seriousness in the rocks, right? We're, we're being kind of about the rocks, but... I mean, this is fun, right? Getting them little black pits into the stones, making them feel stonier than stony. Mm -hmm. Making our regular. That's that's the big thing is just to remember that that you know nature does this in like a woohoo way. So you get a woohoo too. Get your woohoo on. Notice how we get these little little bits in there, and it just, when you pull away from it, it's just like, these are the best stones. And also, now you kind of get a sense of, like, why would anyone paint the canvas first? It mm -hmm. helps, doesn't it? Yeah. These little things all make a difference. Stuff that anyone can do, anywhere, anytime. Look at our stones! Ah, I love when Cad Red says that my painting's better than the reference. Huh. It always makes me feel so good. Now, I've got to come here and, um, there's the button, because it just went out. Come on, come back. All right, we're going to finish this out. Let's do a step. And All we're going right. to do some finishing touches, including the claws. Let's see here. Ah, Heather C., thank you so much for the emojis. Okay, now I'm going to take my same brush, my number one liner, back into my gray color that I used to make my my wonderful claws before. And there are four. And bring them in.
This is just so that when I go to do the highlights and things, there's a nice deep dark shadow to be working from. All right. That's going to need to have a dry. While that's having a dry, I'm going to get my light light color. I'm going to come along here and I'm going to make sure that this I gotta turn that. I didn't see that very well. Sometimes that'll happen where I just don't see it well enough, and I can come put it back. Just making sure that the the nose has a couple highlights on it because they do. Isn't that nice? Mm-hmm. Little touches, right? Now, that's drawing. I'm going to come over, and I am going to catch in these claws. And I'm going to use my cad uh, yellow ochre and my cad red. I'm gonna get a lot of white, so much white. And a little more yellow ochre. And then a little bit of my white and my yellow ochre, but very light, super light. Too much red. <laughs> Looks like he's got a bloody toe. <laughs> Sometimes that'll happen. You're like, oh, it's too much, too much. Sometimes it's hard to get the paint even off the brush. Mm -hmm. A lot of thought into toes, I know. I hate to turn it on, you guys. I'm sorry. I just need a better angle to see it when I'm painting it. There we go. Those look pretty good. Yeah. Now, if I'm having trouble seeing the far ones, what I do is I come back with my shadow color. Oh, and I put on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah. Always helpful. Oh, yeah, so much better. I'm going to come here and very delicately make sure that I just drop the shadow off the nail, and that will help it show. See how it do? Mm-hmm. Go over here, I can go even darker than just making sure. Coming in, sharpening up the shell. That's nice. Right? 
Sure, I'm gonna have to show. So some of these cracks are deeper, right? More yeah. profound. Just exaggerating. Sometimes you just got to exaggerate. Yeah. All right, just pulling a line along his face. I'm just pulling these things all out from each other. Even up here, I can exaggerate a little bit. Get that out. Does it just not get better and better and better? It really does. So the glasses are just regular reading glasses, and I just magnify enough to be able to see what I'm doing. Because sometimes at a particular distance, I can't really see it. That's okay. Because they, they, they figured out how to unage eyes, so I just feel like any minute now. Hmm. Not in human trials or anything exciting yet. Just all hoping, right? Yeah. Isn't he cute? I think Turned he's so good. cute. Yes. Just good. I'm just doing little touch-ups, little highlights. I'm making like colors and I'm coming in and saying, you know, where is this, where is this brighter? It's too heavy of load. Still using. Oh, he's up. A tortoise popping out of the canvas, popping out of the shell. He is just something, isn't he? You just you just know who, who he is. You just play with him. You just love him. He's just, he loves you back. Yeah. Right? These are the things. I think we're getting there, buddy. I think I'm happy. Yeah. Are you happy? I'm happy. You know, you can keep painting. If you've got more in you, you can keep painting. I feel like I got some place. I'm going to look at him real close. Yeah, I like him. He's a hatchy baby. He's a hatchy baby. Do hatchy things. Give that duder a signature. Oh, I think so. All right, let's do a signature, and then uh, we will. Oh, my goodness. I have to decide how to sign. With a brush. Yeah. In this particular case, I may actually do... A little blue and white just because I don't think it'll distract from the painting too much, but will at least show. Should have taken my glasses off. There we go. Signed. That's nice. Signed, sealed, delivered. He just came into the world this way. Is happy and ready to be tortoise. Yeah. Is is good and, and has wonderful life ahead. And that's what I wish for every tortoise. Ah, um, my Danny Tucker and Terry. Uh, is this an olive ridley sea turtle? They return to the same beach where they were hatched to lay their eggs. Truly amazing creatures. Thank you so much. Terry, I don't know. Um, somebody came in earlier and uh, said that they were a reptile expert, like before the live started, and said this was a tortoise, not a turtle. And so I just added tortoise turtle to the thing because I'm like, I am not. And my reference didn't really state what it was. So I was like, turtle. <laughs> and that's probably how you feel about it too. Turtle. Uh, so that that's kind of where we are with that. Um, guys, this was so great. Be sure and subscribe. If you haven't checked your subscription status, sometimes it's good to 
unsubscribe and resubscribe and re-ring the bell if you're not getting notifications. Um, be sure and check my Facebook page because I put up events of upcoming uh, lives that you can go hit reminders on too. And then, of course, we have the text 233-222, the Art Sherpa. If you'd like to be signed up for text messaging, it's really only good for North America for right now. Um, Tuesday, 1 p.m., I'm going to be painting seagrasses. Yeah. Sea, well, it's, it's seagrass and a sunset and a beach, and it's going to be, again, one of our nice 8x8 eight, eight eight canvases. So, you know, these look so good on the wall together in collections, don't they? Yeah. They look so good in collections. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate every one of you. If you want to share your turtle in the um, Facebook group with us, definitely that, like Lindsay mentioned, your first painting has got to be Sherpa. Maybe this is your first painting. Come by and join the group and share yours. If you're already in the group, definitely share your sea turtle. Um, Don, do you have any messages? Thank you, guys. I had a wonderful time with you. Be good to yourselves and be good to each other. And I want to see you. And an easel really soon. Bye-bye.